uh, which was where I started working before. It was the first time I went to Silicon Valley. It was the first time that I saw what a web company needed to do um, to, to actually be successful. It was the first time where I saw you know, a group of 20 people creating and, and fulfilling all the different responsibilities and needs of a, of a company. Um, straight out of college, I went to PayPal back in 1999. And, um, and you know, uh, PayPal at the time was trying to compete with all the large credit card companies, all the different other forms of, sort of uh, uh, money transaction services out there. And it was just a very fun and fulfilling experience to be able to go through that and to know that, um, you know, to, to be able to see what 20 people, and it certainly started to grow slowly over time, you know, what 100 people can actually do when it was trying to face the challenges of competing with some of these largest companies out there that were doing sort of um, money exchanges. And a lot of that, a lot of that learning was taken on to uh, Taken onto YouTube. In fact, we probably took most of the uh, the engineers and product managers, and most of the uh, the, the original people came onto YouTube when we started. Um, but and I think that the with what the great thing about um, with starting with uh, with YouTube is, like, you know, we always hated being labeled with uh, you know either as entrepreneurs or you know, a web two dot company, or definitely the label of genius. Um, <laughs> And I think it was really just to try to solve a simple problem, which is how do you share videos online? You know that we started seeing that everybody had these digital cameras, and you know, it was reaching the price point was reaching under two hundred dollars. Everybody had a digital camera. Um, people had, and it's so sort of um, everything fell into place back in two thousand five when we first started YouTube. Was, uh, digital cameras became pretty much um, everybody had one. Everybody had the ability, and there to be able to take a video, right? But at the same time, you can share these photos that you take with these digital cameras, just about anyone you can email them, you can put them online. But when it comes to the videos, um, it, most of these videos, just they just stay on people's computers. There's no way to share these videos with one another. They're, um, they're just too big to email back and forth. Um, and then you have these problems with, uh, you know, if it's a Windows Media Player or a QuickTime Player, all the different incompatible codecs out there to be able to try to to share these videos and we thought that, you know, um, this was back in 2005 when we started YouTube, that it really was going to be a more and more increasingly um, a problematic for people as, as more people had bought digital cameras, as more people got online and had broadband connections, not just in the U.S., but across the world, and as more people wanted to share these videos with other people, they knew friends and family, as well as sort of the, uh, the entire sort of um, wider public, we wanted to create just the simplest way to uh, to share these videos, and I guess you can look back and, and see that the sharpest set, you know, and in many ways, you look at the other uh, growth curve of, of YouTube, which is the fastest growing company in the history of the internet, the, um, the sharpest growth in terms of both users, uh, traffic, and, and ultimately, you know, sort of acquisition, it was the, uh, the sharpest set of the acquisition process of any company out there, and I think that really goes out to, um, it's not so much that that I think we did anything spectacular, but I think it was really just trying to identify the problem that existed and, and trying to come up with a problem, the solution. And you know, we weren't really the first guys to ever create a, a video sharing site. There have been plenty of other video sharing sites before 2005, but I think that the, um, the, the catalyst for our success was really timing, luck, and, and a lot of hard work. When you were a child, Steve, uh, did you do any uh, early experiments? Uh, um, were you creative uh, as, uh, before any of this uh, uh, that you joined PayPal um, as, as a little boy? Uh, were you curious? Yeah, I guess um, uh, a lot of it was um, playing around with, I think, it, you know, maybe the, the story to tell when we started interviewing candidates for people coming sort of outside of um, sort of your GPA and looking at the you know, sort of academic history, there's a, there's a big part which generally arises about sort of activities or things that, uh, projects that they worked on outside of school. And I think that some of the, um, the best engineers that we brought on, some of the best, um, the best people on the staff, it wasn't so much the, their academic history that, that's, you know, um, that was illustrious. So it was the stuff that they accomplished outside of it. And to me, the reason why that's more important is because it really shows that you know, it's not just 
it's not just sort of a job that they have to do of going to school and getting great, great scores, but it's, it's actually something that, that really they're passionate about. And I thought that was a big thing for me at the cost of you know, some of the, uh, the classes that I didn't like so much uh, with uh, receiving poor grades and those, but at the same time, I, I think I learned probably the most out of the time that was spent outside of the classroom. Was there a eureka moment? Uh, Newton said when he invented the calculus that uh, he felt that he was standing on the shoulder of giants. Uh, for you, was there a eureka moment that you said, ah, this is the way to do it? Or was that a gradual process? Uh, but yeah, I guess it happened pretty hard, you know, uh, we started the site back in, we started working on the site in January of 2005. Uh, we launched the site in, like, a, a sort of a public beta site in May of 2005. And uh, if you look back at the history of the, the growth curve, it was always a sharp ascent, but a sharp ascent didn't, doesn't mean much when you're sort of doubling from, you know, 10 users a week to 20 users a week. And we didn't really know what we were on to until, I would say, about November, December of 2005. Um, and a few things all happened at once. There was, uh, there were a few videos, two videos that I remember being big on the site at the time. There was, the, um, there was a Saturday Night Live video that was uploaded as well as a Ronaldinho soccer video by, uh, by Nike that was uploaded to the site. And the Nike video was, uh, was particularly striking because it was uploaded by Nike, but it was uploaded under a sort of a pseudonym of, I think it was a, a very common name of Joe B. And they wanted to, to, to sort of create this the, the video was Ron and Dino basically juggling, juggling a soccer ball off of a goal post. But it had, it was very shaky. It didn't seem like, um, it definitely didn't seem like it was a professionally produced video. And I think that was one, one area where, you know, um, where we thought that Nike really got it, that you know, this, is, this is about trying to create something that's user generated, that can be felt by the community and users and the viewers, that it's not something that is a, uh, a large corporation just feeding advertising down, but actually trying to, to be one of the users and trying to, to become um, one of the, you know, it really seemed like it was just a, an avid fan that was taking a video of Ron Dino and he was practicing. But these two videos were, were the, I think the hallmarks of when we were starting in 2005, we thought this, this was really a phenomenon here. Because before 2005, uh, it's hard to imagine back then, but just videos were not possible to be viewed on, on a, and browsers. If you see most of the, uh, the videos back in early 2005, they either required you to download an application or, or if you were on a, a Macintosh, videos wouldn't work if you're on Windows and sometimes ask you to, even today, there are a lot of sites out there that's very difficult to watch videos. It's sort of a 50 50 coin toss whether or not the video is going to start after you click on it. And I think that uh, with, with YouTube, what we did in 2005 was really try to define uh, that this is actually a, a, a viable market that people will watch videos using a browser um, instead of, it's, it's really transforming sort of the other computer and the desktop and the laptop into a place that you can get entertainment other than just, you know, emails and, and, uh, and, and other of the traditional uses of the internet. Yeah, I think it's really transforming the way we uh, we view entertainment and will transform more and more as the years go by. It's phenomenal what you and uh, our third guest is uh, Mark, um, who was born in January of 1999. I mean, that seems like yesterday. <laughs> I, uh, I met Mark uh, in New York um, at uh, a friend's house, uh, my friend Sherry Young, uh, who uh, always has to take extremely interesting people uh, whenever you go to her house. I don't she's a, a great. Uh, uh, a great, great listening. And uh, when I w walked into the apartment, I heard the most beautiful music coming from another room. And uh, it was so moving, I had to see who was playing. And uh, when I walked in there, I was so surprised to see little Mark Yu at the piano, playing with such emotion, a Chopin nocturne, that uh, so beautifully, I had never heard it so beautifully. And uh, it, it, it really moved me 